Shweti, we can start. Namaskar. A very warm welcome to all of you. Aaj hum log yahan par hain. We all are here today to commemorate the special day, 2nd August. And so why this day is special? Because the great Indian horticulturalist, Dr. Chima, was born on this day on 1894. 2nd August, 1894. Now this day is special because he invented and he did research and thus he's paved the way for what we have today. So let's celebrate this special day, remembering him and all his special research and development towards horticulture in India. So thank you all of you. Thank you all the speakers for joining us today in on this special occasion. We'll start with uh, Dr. Sunil Masalbar. Uh, sir, are you here? Uh, on behalf of him, sorry, we have Dr. Patil. Yeah. I'm on behalf here. of Associate, sorry. I'm here, madam. Dr. Yes, sir. sir. Good, good to know that. Namaskar. Namaskar. Yes. So we'd like to have uh, your views and would like to hear from you out. Yeah. Sir, over to you. Yeah, yeah. Myself, Dr. Pramod Patil, Professor of Horticulture and Student Welfare Officer. It's great pleasure to have this joining the this 129th birth anniversary of great horticulturists of India, not only Maharashtra, not only from Pune, but for India and abroad also. So many varieties he has given. Just Madam told that today is that is second August. This is birthday. He born in 1894. That is in Chialco district of Punjab province of Pakistan. Now it is in Pakistan. And got BSc Agriculture 1915, MSc 1917 and DSc also 1925 from Government College Lahore, University of Punjab in Pakistan. He was a scholar of Empire Marketing Board and he was first Indian Agricultural Services, that is IS, that time in 1921. First Indian horticulturist to the Bombay presidency, that is Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Karnataka. He was a professor, we are very proud of him. He was a professor here, professor of horticulture in College of Agriculture, Pune. 1921 to 1946. Also, he was a principal, the then principal, now it is called a state dean, College of Agriculture 1943 to 1946. Worked on various committees and chairman, secretary, and wrote so many books, 11 books, and 35 bulletins. And his contribution for India was very huge. That is, huge demonstration on 120 hectares of the citrus crops demonstrated in India first time. In 1932, he received a letter of appreciation from the King George V from the Britain for scientific production of the Alfonso mango, first time in India, and it's not only production, but it's cold storage and export by the parcel from the, by the boat to the King of England. Hence, he got the appreciation from the King of Britain. In 1934, he established cold storage first time and gas storage in Ganesh King, Pune, and first successful storage of the fruits and vegetables in cold storage he has shown. 
not only this fruits and vegetables but he worked around flowers also export of the roses to france and germany and proved that india is competent for the export of the flowers also he evolved so many varieties and important one in 1924 selection 7 selection 94 grapes and 1927 That is Hanwan fruit. You all hear only and Lucknow forty nine, Lucknow twenty four, Lucknow forty six, Guava. That is Lucknow forty nine is still commercial variety in India. That is self bending and giving production of three fifty kg per tree. He bred and on a hybrid two also in nineteen thirty four. And Ganesh pomegranate was. A commercial variety in India now replaced by other varieties, and for his appreciation, government of Maharashtra named the variety in Lucknow forty nine as a Sardar, and selection seven grape, that is Chima Sahibi, also worked on the Plumeria alba, and you all pink color Safa. such a great personality and we are proud this college of agriculture and our university is proud of him that he has worked spent his entire life in this area in this pune college in maharashtra thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you for presenting your views on dr chima Next, uh, we'd like to hear from Dr. Uh, Jagdish Rane, Director, Central Institute of Arid Horticulture from Bikaner. So he's joining us all the way from Bikaner, sir. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you, Swati. Good morning to all. Ah, uh, who are all there? I am able to see some students there in addition to the mentor, ah, uh, that uh, Prakash Kulkarni and all the professors there. uh it's a really a great privilege for me to be part of this meeting i uh, hope i am audible isn't it yes sir yes. sure uh, please carry on uh, the meeting on the eve of 129th birthday of a great horticulturist a great uh, person who has uh, a lot of accomplishment in the field of horticulture that is gs chima um i am here to share uh, some of my views like uh, on the inspiration that uh, horticulture horticulturist derived uh, in extending his dream uh, to the arid region that is uh, totally like harsh extreme conditions i will be like sharing some of my views there and uh, at this point i want to pass on the mic to the next expert Uh, yes so we will take it over to you yeah yes you'll be presenting your views in some time you said oh uh, do, do, do you think i can share my slides yes sir you can share yes, your sure. slides okay please. thank you thank please you very much ahead. i will share my slide are you able to share or is there any technical no i will be able to share i Great. think thank you are slides visible yes sir yeah so i thought like uh, uh, i will i will provide you a glance at the arid horticulture we are talking a lot about this uh, uh, thar desert and possible horticultural interventions there i have put another keyword there inspiration driven accomplishments and way forwards when i talk about inspiration definitely like uh, the inspiration derived of derived from the great work of uh, dr gs chima so i will be i will be like talking about um, start with the tribute to dr chima and uh, inspiration uh, the driving force cih for arid region plans ahead for arid region scope for collaboration and summary i chose this topic to introduce 
what the horticulture here and what we are contributing as an institute under Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Because uh, many of you are well acquainted with the progress in horticulture made in Maharashtra, Karnataka and many other places, but uh, <clears throat> very few are well acquainted with the arid horticulture. Uh, because we are talking about horticulture here in this institute, the ICRCH fraternity, which includes scientists from CIH Bikaner and uh, uh, experimental station at the Bejalpur Godra and also all the scientists in coordinated program for arid horticulture across 18 centers. We all warmly cherish the memory of Dr. Chima, whose visionary ideas materialize into concrete actions and impactful horticulture interventions. His unwavering dedication remains a powerful catalyst for driving transformative change in the arid and semi-arid region through innovative approaches to horticulture. The legacy of his work will continue to inspire and guide future endeavors in the pursuit of sustainable development in these challenging environments. So I have highlighted some of the keywords that visionary ideas, impactful interventions, innovative approaches and all. I will be like uh, I highlighting some of them in my future, uh, like uh, next slides. Visionary ideas, he was the person who thought that a temperate crop like uh, grapes can be a boon for Indian uh, subcontinent and particularly under semi-arid region of Maharashtra and all, everyone knows about it. That will be elaborated by the director uh, NRC grapes there. Other one is the pomegranate can be a turning point for livelihood and income of dry semi-arid region. That's what was his vision. So where we are, we started with Ganesh 1936. <laughs> In 1936, it is his variety, his contribution. And now we have Phule Bhagwa Super 2013 in between like uh, Bhagwa 2003, which is occupying a vast area, not only in uh, uh, southern uh, India or central India, but also now in uh, arid region of uh, Rajasthan. So this was his vision. Then impactful trigger. <laughs> That's what like other point like I want to put here, what exactly happened because of that uh, trigger or the spark he initiated in the 1936. If you look into the figure, that is uh, a figure of 2021, so the country stands first here. I don't want to explain, not only in production, but also like uh, in export also it is standing first. So this is what like, this is where we had to acknowledge the contribution of Dr. Chima. So not only in these two fruit crops, if you look into the uh, biography and all the literature published by him as narrated by Dr. Masalkar a couple of minutes ago, he has contributed in many of the fruit crops and probably like if you look into the horticulture production, the progress that we made in the recent years, 1936, it was not as much as it was in 2002, 02. But look at this, like it is almost doubled during this period. Probably he had that vision, the future of horticulture industry in India in 1939, he wrote, and many of the statement which he wrote there, probably they were all like the, uh, the driving force for the thoughts to move the horticulture and Indian horticulture forward. So in this context, can the Thar Desert, can follow the footsteps, can it contribute to horticulture? That is the question. If you look into the pomegranate that I derived from one of the slides, which is like uh, being projected by NRC pomegranate Solapur. So it clearly shows that pomegranate is uh, spreading in Rajasthan also in the desert, harsh, extreme climates. So we have here KHD based cropping system, antioxidant rich local crops, expanding area under pomegranate and date palm also. That's what the opportunities there. So when we talk about desert realities, we, we are talking about hot, arid, harsh environment, extreme temperature, sometimes 48 to 50 degree. There in uh, central and southern India, it may be 45, 48 for a couple of days or something like that. Here, my colleagues say that it may be 
48 to 50 for almost a month that did not happen this season. I'm very lucky about it. In addition to that, the water, underground water is saline and uh, there is no humidity in the air. It is like uh, a kind of sucking, aridity. <clears throat> then moisture, deficit environment, they are all four major constraints. But opportunity is even under this condition, there are natural diversity in cl and climate resilience that we can explore. That are, they are all the opportunities. So ICR Central Institute of Arid Horticulture, located in Bikaner, Rajasthan, has a mandate to contribute to the arid horticulture. During the 30 years of service, it has maintained more than 1,000 arid fruit and 850 uh, vegetable germ plants. It coordinates experiment at 18 sites across India, developed promising cultivars of 26 fruit crops and 32 vegetable crops. Whenever we say that the development of varieties, definitely we will derive some of the information generated by the Tachima. Again, three decades of service has been dedicated to basic and strategic research, repository of genetic resources, transfer of technology and coordination, as I said, not only at Bikaner, but also at uh, experimental station, Vajalpur, Godra. How can CA can contribute to arid region? If that is the question, then it is through arid food crop technology, vegetable crop technology, and we are looking for other horticultural interventions also, including medicinal plant and floriculture that we have to introduce here. Through improved cultivars, native climate resilient crops, and a smart crop for carbon dioxide sequestration. From that angle, we really didn't talk, but we have to talk, we have to look into that aspect. Improved arid and semi-arid fruit crops, if you look into, we talk about bale, jamun, custard apple, kirni, karunda, tamarind, pomegranate, beer, falsa, chironji, mahua. Many of them are for arid and semi-arid region. And you take any of them, at least one variety we have. So in addition to that one, we do have mulberry, falsa, lasoda, kir, cactus, pear, karunda. We are working on that one and improved vegetable crops. You must have heard about the KHD. This is one of the desert most climate resilient crop which can survive with less water once it is established. And here it is treated as a kamadhenu. It gives everything, fodder, wood, and also eatable, uh, eatable what you call sangri. It, is, it can be stored and it was the source of food in uh, during the drought years, extreme drought years in earlier period. In addition to that one, local uh, crops like kachiri, it is a uh, cucurbitaceous family, small uh, like vegetable or fruit crops used with the condiments and long melon and all, they are very, very popular here. We talk about the bear development and there like uh, we talk about the rootstock. So if you look into the rootstock, well, uh, Gizipus rotundifolia, uh, Dr. Chima worked on that one extensively and the information, scientific leads he generated, probably that is that is the base for these varieties. We have bear variety, Goma Kirti, then Thar Bhubraj, then Thar Sevika and Thar Malti. They are the four varieties of bear and we, we express our tributes to Dr. Chima in that context. Impact of CIH crop cultivars, like we talk about Thar Shoba. Uh, in the desert, this uh, uh, Prosopis cineraria, this is uh, the native crop, but uh, in uh, uh, it has got thorns, but CIH developed thornless varieties and it has become highly popular. Kachri also we have um, uh, developed new varieties, which gives uniform fruit as compared to the local one. Snack melon also uh, giving, uh, that is also very popular because of its uh, uh, productivity, also the taste and the aroma. We, Goma Yashi, the bale variety developed by CIH is highly popular and uh, it is thornless, easy to harvest, suitable for high density planting, good for processing. And there's a lot of demand in uh, for this particular variety in uh, Gujarat. We do talk about cost efficient protected technology under arid condition to save water, to minimize uh, nutrient application, for the nutrient use efficiency and water use efficiency. Ultimately, not only the fruit, but value addition is very important. We are talking about it and lot of value added product that we are talking and we are trying to commercialize them. One of them is curry powder developed by Kachri. 
and uh, this is being patented and we are looking for like uh, um, the commercial partner for this one and this one is very important eco friendly bio pesticides from the native crop uh, native crop this bio pesticide has been developed from a native crop, a crop called thumba and uh, patented and it's a bioefficacy uh, it is a organic bio pesticide and uh, effective against sucking pest like helicovapa armigera spodoptera latura white fly mainly <clears throat> then uh, it doesn't have any adverse effect there either for the um, plants or even consumers and we are also looking for some commercial partner here and we have commercialized many more technologies here i need not uh, read about it and important variety of uh, long melon ridge guard uh, with, which have been developed for uh, rajasthan and we have also some varieties developed for gujarat we talk about khd as i said tharshoba kachri then uh, matira snap melon they are all very popular in this region technology impact if you look into farmers earning net income 1 lakh to uh, nearly 2 lakh per season by adopting <coughs> kachri hk119 technology more than 20000 farmers more than 6000 hectares and increased income 20, 23 to 27% it is spreading rapidly in this region and there is a lot of market demand 48% of the market demand is met by this particular variety of kachri and the same thing with uh, long melon, snap melon, that is uh, farmer's net income is 1 lakh to 1.67 lakh there. And it is spread uh, to 13,000 farmers and more than 4,000 hectares and 28% for better quality. Uh, in the, and it is popular, for, popular in the local market. So we do produce seeds of all these uh, uh, varieties and also improved varieties of local crops and also planting material of KGD, Bear, Avala, Kinu, Jammu and all. Uh, so we are like looking for the collaborations. We are looking for the opportunities, particularly in case of date palm, it is a boon for arid economy, survives extreme temperatures, thrives with saline water, potential to provide 2 to 2.5 lakh here. And it is said that uh, uh, this crop has its head in uh, uh, fire and the roots in water. That's what is said. Uh, opportunities to reduce foreign exchange on import. We are spending a lot of money on import of the date products and also date seedlings nowadays. Gujarat visualized the potential long back and they are like almost like 17,000 growing date palm in 17,000 hectares out of 22,000 and around 6,000 in Rajasthan. There's a large scope here for date palm and we have to look into that one. But the constraint is the planting material, limited potential through suckers, huge import of tissue culture, seedling at heavy cost, then access to irrigation, a crop with head in fire, that's what I said. And uh, it needs at least 200 liters per tree, particularly during the fruiting. Pollen source, fruits can, uh, cannot develop without pollens from male plants. There are like male and female plants here, particularly for the students. So pollens are very important. If you collect the pollens and there is a market for that pollen, that is an opportunity for the startup. And trade specific genotypes of arid crops, if you look into, we have now a, a variety of germ plug, which can produce evident pollens, like we are trying to multiply them. And if someone wants to start this business itself or want to incorporate this business in their existing business, this really like remunerative. Then micro, micro propagation is the game changer. We are importing a lot of like tissue culture plants here, almost in a course. Like there are very few laboratories in, in uh, India, in Gujarat and uh, in Rajasthan, but they cannot meet the demand. But there is, there is a scope, lot of scope to get into this one. Uh, the earlier experiment that we did that resulted in one variety called Anand Local and that can give 2.5 lakh per hectare as evidenced in Kazri Jodhpur. In addition to that one, if there is like we talk about the green belt, it is a desert area if you look into and there are a lot many options for us. 
orchard establishment in situ, then aula like crops, then bear, bale, kejri, drumstick, karunda, all diversified because some of them are like frost susceptible, including the bear. That's one of the major concern. Some are curry ground story crops, cluster bean and all that we can just look into and rabi season crop also like some of the dryland spices. There are a lot of opportunity and we can make this desert greener. So we do have opportunities here in the form of arid horticulture crop diversity, climate change mitigation potential, crop product and seed production quality, planting material, as I said earlier, value added products, they are very important to make the uh, rural economy of arid region very stronger, increasing access to irrigation water. That is also being realized because of Indira Gandhi Canal here, which is like uh, has potential to irrigate something like 5.6 lakh and at present 1.4 lakh hectares are under cultivation. Then how to accomplish the task? inclusivity in prioritizing the research. We want to include uh, private partners and also the farmers regularly and we conduct a series of uh, meeting for each of the crops that we are talking about. Then database and digital access, enhanced focus on value of value of arid region products, supply driven to demand driven agriculture, how to do that and how to manage that. That is really very important. Frontline demonstration or incubation of food system benefits if we include arid horticulture, preparedness for mechanization, that's really very important. We are trying to develop training system, pruning system, so even for the bear in such a way that in future, that can be harvesting can be mechanized. Other option is about high density planting of crops like uh, jamun that also we're working on. That's another opportunity, but we have also to look into the, it's the impact of high density on environment, how it will affect the soil, how it's affect the soil microflora under these extreme conditions. If you look into the CIH, a unique institute in a blooming desert. So if you look into here, that is the almost the sandy soil, but it is possible to make it green. It is a recent photograph where our guest house and uh, farmers hostels are regulate, uh, 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 are there and uh, nobody can believe that this is the uh, desert. So in summary, CIH can offer fruit and vegetable technologies. CIH can accelerate command area agriculture in this arid zone. CIH can contribute rural economy with improved varieties of native crop. CIH can add climate resilience in command area value in terms of nutritive and nutritional content. So to relish reoriented version of arid agroecology, visit ICR CIH. My thanks to Dr. Prakash Kulkarni and Kisan uh, group, then organizing team, our DDG horticulture, ADG horticulture, and all the scientists of CIH where I am located. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You so much. Thank you so much, sir, for the presentation. It was, it really had a lot of knowledge and information for, of course, all, all of us also and all the future generation students who are there and uh, hearing you out. So it was really good, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So moving ahead, we have uh, Krishna Bhushan, Mr. Anil Meher from KVK Narayan Gaon. <laughs> Namaste, can you hear today, us? Today we are celebrating 100, 129th birth anniversary of our great legion, Dr. Chima, the great horticulturist of that era. He has done a lot of work for the for the doing the betterment of the farmer. I'm looking as a Dr. Chima as a farmer. So as he introduced the horticulture crops like uh, pomegranate, gava, then grapes also, and a lot of fruit crops, which are now been popular among the farmers to, uh, for growing and have their income source of horticulture cultivation in whole of India. Now we are looking for that of uh, looking for that of era, where there was also limitation of research work, limitation of all practical to be done on the farms, then irrigation facilities and cold storages, all these things constraints was there. But Dr. Chima has passed all these hurdles and he started to work uh, like a soldier. He is a brave man. He, he has no, no any such a type of hesitation to overcome the, all the difficulties. 
I we look into that in a uh, uh, pre-independence era. There was not much of the government is looking, giving the promotions, not helping to the farmers, uh, scientists who have their all facilities for the uh, or uh, bringing the new varieties in horticulture. Now we are looking for the Indian horticulture scenario. Now we are stand in few crops second. In some crops, we are first in the world production. Now we are also uh, imposing for going for the farmers to go for the exports. These exports varieties are, say, brought by the Chima, giving the pomegranate. I am giving the example of pomegranate. Pomegranate is now the second largest uh, country of production in India, below China. But we are exporting higher than that of China. Uh, we are looking for the, the export of the grapes also. Now the Chima Sahibi. I have planted on my farm in 1964, Chima Sahibi. It was previously known as the Selection Sahibi. They named by the Chima Sahibi. We have switched over from the Bokri Pakdi, these all varieties, which is not at a transportable, that uh, perishability is much more. So we cannot transport to the longer distance markets. So here, the, the, it has a very firm berry, which is a very solid pulp with a lead juicy. And it is a table grapes variety, having containing the more sugar, which likes our Indian uh, customers in cities to eat the more sweet fruits than the than the that of the say, acidic fruits. So these these are the initial steps in say grape industry, and then coming up the Thompson and like that, and he has done a lot of work in Ganesh, which is very heart of our horticulture growing area. It is the heart of horticulture area in Maharashtra. It is also connected with the Karnataka. It is also connected with the Kishra. It is connected with the port. Now we are now exporting our all fruits by ship. So these are the say he has worked in lot in Pune. And that is a say the proud of Pune people. We people are proud that we have the great scientist, the great horticulturist, uh, he who, who is uh, among us, that is, say, the proud for us. And I'm looking that what work has started. Now he has switched to the Sangamwadi, where he got the farm in military area. Now still that farm is there. He has done after his retirement, he has continuously worked on his own farm. He has collected a lot of so he has a, a lot of collection of plant, plants, materials, which can be used for the further processing, for the development of the new variety, new strains, new that which, which is required on international markets for resistance of diseases, resistance of insects, which we are now looking for the, uh, say, uh, residue free uh, fruits and vegetables, especially. So this, this work has to be carried out by the university, research people. They should carry out on what there should be the focus. What is our response? What the what crops will be there in the hands of farmer? Who can pay the better prices, the remunerative prices in the say, market? Now we can look at so in, in Indian uh, agriculture economy, the horticulture has a share of 45 to 50 percent of the totally agriculture economy. Now we are looking for the processing, we are looking for exports, value addition, all these things are incremental prices for the farmers. So these far farmers have, uh, Dr. Seema like scientist is there, and our Indian horticulture is Indian farmer. And then our traders and all the young generation coming up in international market, mark for marketing all of the way. India has an immense potential for the global catering of the fruits and vegetables. It is immense potential. We have the lot of sun, sunny days in India. We have the lot of sunny days and lot of geographical uh, uh, areas. We, in India, we can have the, such, a, such a type of tremendous potential. Any state, we, we can cater the entire world, India also and the entire world. So, cereals, pulses like that, sugar cane, these are also the commercial crops now. Now we are speaking like, like a millet for the nutritional value. 
Yeah, we just coming over for the nutrition value over the chat of wheat and paddy and all these things. And now we have to focus for the better healthy. Coming generation should be healthy, strong enough to face all the natural calamities that of say, and also of the, there is a lot of struggle between the countries regarding the, the artificial interior. So these fruits provide all vitamins, vital vitamins and everything to the body. So my, I have a great tribute to the Dr. Chima. He is a lenient, lenient horticulturist, first Indian horticulturist in India, who has given the pathway to us to go on that pathway to encourage our entire community and cater to the world, whole, whole of the world. So my uh, all my students of my institute are now has has been here. We are celebrating uh, in front of them, Dr. Chima. These all students are listening for all the all the speakers, and they will definitely inspire. These students are going to be my, our say uh, country's backbone. When they are leading to the country for the coming futures. They are they are the leaders in say commercial marketing of all of our products, which we grow by the farmers to and cater to the consumers all of the world. So all of, all of us tribute, a great tribute from my students, my all colleagues, my all farmers of KVK. I'm the chairman of KVK. I give the tribute to the legion, Dr. Chim. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It, as you rightly said, the students are really inspired and it's, it's really good to see them here. You've made a wonderful effort. Um, uh, Deepak, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Really. Okay, I think uh, sir's network has got, so the video mm. is frozen, so I got a little. Yeah. Um, okay, no problem. So thank you. Moving ahead then to Dr. S. K. Roy, Director Atai, ICR Pune. Dr. Roy, Namaskar. Will you please present your views? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. We can hear you and we can hear you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, all the distinguished guests, Dr. Ramin, Director CRA, Dr. Punjani. Uh, I am very much thankful to the organizer, uh, and it is my privilege that uh, I am able to associate with uh, a celebration of a such great uh, horticulture in the country. So, among the previous speakers, has already narrated about his achievement, he was a such a great leader and he is called father of agriculture in India. So it is a uh, very, uh, very much, uh, 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 this, 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 uh, this is a very much uh, uh, program that I, uh, we can remember in, in, a, in a day, uh, the agriculture is uh, gaining uh, very much uh, uh, importance in the country, country's agriculture. So we have seen that uh, he is a great pioneer in the field of different horticultural crops like banana, mango, guava, and grapes. In Maharashtra, he has introduced two important crops, grapes and pomegranates, which are a very, very important crop in country level today. So it is uh, what we to remember him in such a great occasion. Uh, his, uh, uh, his vision was a very, uh, he was a, also a visionary, and his vision was uh, to develop agriculture in the country. And uh, for that purpose, he has not only given importance to the cultivation of new crops, introduction of new crops, but also the processing and the storage aspects also, which is very much important uh, for the horticulture crops. 
because of the culture, the crops, uh, people will not grow, because there is no sufficient facility of storage, as well as that, uh, uh, processing and addition. So um, it is a great occasion. And uh, uh, he, has, he was born in 1894, it is his 189th birthday. And uh, as I, uh, one of the speaker told me, he was from the uh, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, and another culture is also Dr. K. L. Chanda. Uh, he was also from Pakistan. He was also a great horticulturist. Uh, uh, thereafter, uh, we have also worked under him. Uh, so now, because of these pioneering leaders, now country has uh, seen a boom in agricultural um, sector uh, in all the states, not only in Maharashtra, in Gujarat, in this Western India, but also in the Eastern India also. Many, many crops as now many states has uh, taken surplus in production of the uh, different crops, uh, particularly food crops in agriculture, like pineapple, West Bengal is now surplus of production of pineapple. And similarly, mango is uh, now a very important crop in most of the states, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, even in Maharashtra. Uh, so the, all the horticultural crops has again a uh, momentum because of introduction of new varieties and uh, particularly hybrids and others. These all are uh, possible due to the, the visionary leadership of great leader like Dr. Chima and others. So it is uh, uh, the horticulture that is uh, in, um, in our now we are talking about the doubling farmer income in the country. And uh, um, our ministry has published one book also regarding the doubling farmer income as interests, which are released by the Honorable uh, Agriculture Minister uh, of the country. And uh, if we, are, we analyze the, how this uh, farmer's income has doubled. Uh, in the in, uh, in last few years, and um, that is main contribution has came from the horticulture and uh, and fishery. Uh, so it is a uh, important document, and uh, the analysis of this uh, this information, which was collected from all over the country, uh, indicate that how the sector is booming. And uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, and uh, what we have to do for further uh, increasing the, uh, improving the horticulture sector in the country. So here I can say that uh, there is a role of the Vishwigyan Kindra, the 733 Keshwigyan Kindra uh, in the country. Uh, they have documented this. Uh, uh, Doubling farmer income story from 75,000 farmers. And uh, their analysis also showed that the horticulture uh, in the different state has uh, contributed uh, immensely uh, due to the introduction of these uh, new varieties and the uh, processing and addition, uh, introduction of processing and addition sector. Uh, so have KVK um, also may uh, play an important role in identifying this uh, uh, the need of the particular crops, which crop is uh, uh, and which varieties are important in each particular district, and uh, analyzing them and uh, providing the support for uh, export and new addition. Uh, the uh, this particular sector can. Uh, for this purpose, in this year, we are just over the Maharashtra agriculture production is uh, high. And uh, uh, seeing that, we have uh, just we are making a training program for the chemical scientists. For us, in this activities in agriculture, 
and now 30 scientists are uh, now joining in the month of August in the state of Ludhiana for uh, uh, processing and validation of these uh, agricultural crops. Uh, so um, it is true that the agriculture it is our now most important uh, uh, in agriculture because they compete in the uh, agriculture sector in the crops like paddy or wheat as not uh, so much. So uh, farmers wanted to see from diversify their agriculture from uh, to the agriculture sector. And uh, in this uh, juncture, it will be uh, very much uh, this type of program will also inspire uh, the farmers as well as the all the sectors in the country. Uh, so I think this type of work in agriculture uh, should be carried forward by the young generation. A lot of students is now uh, studying in horticulture instead of agriculture. The process uh, they are in BSc agriculture is there. So um, all this, uh, I think this uh, work of the great pioneer like uh, Dr. Chima should be carried forward by the new generation. And uh, our horticulture sector will do further. Thanks for uh, providing me the opportunity to speak uh, in this occasion. Thanks to Dr. Nagar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Roy, for presenting uh, and your views on Dr. Chema. It was really informative. Thank you. Moving ahead, we have Dr. Dhananjay Gavande from National Research Center, Grapes, Pune. So we're moving from Pune to Pune itself. Karanjiji, <laughs> can you hear us? Yes, ma'am. Today is oh, our speaker, Dr. Jagdish Ram, Director CIH, Bikaner, Dr. S.K. Roy, Director Atari, Pune, Dr. Anil Mehi, Ushi Bhushan, KVK Narendra, uh, Associate Dean, Dr. Sunil Salkar, <clears throat> Dr. Anjali Karulia, granddaughter of Dr. G.S. Chima, and main inspiration about uh, behind the organizing this program, Dr. Kulkarni, Pune University. Good morning to all. Actually, our director, Dr. Kaushik Banerji, is supposed to attend this program. Due to with some uh, engagement, he is traveling abroad for attending the conference. So he couldn't attend this program. We regret for that. And uh, on behalf of him, and as a representative of Grape Research Institute, I am here to, uh, to pay my tribute to Dr. G.S.G. Actually, all the speakers Earlier to me has mentioned the life history of Dr. Chin. As we know, he was a great scholar. He did his BSc and stood first in university. Secondly, he did his MSc with uh, meritship and he acquired the highest degree in uh, science, that is the doctorate of science, DS. Beside this, as uh, mentioned earlier, he worked in a lot of capacities like horticulture to government of India, then uh, director of agriculture to Bombay State, dean, uh, principal as uh, to College of Agriculture Pune, and next uh, food development advisor to government of India. Actually, one could imagine that uh, a person in his lifetime can uh, adopt such type of position which are very precious one and he has prominently uh, the work done by him is still guiding us. Now he was a great visionary. He thought about the coal storage when electricity was, wasn't uh, reached to the rural India. But he realized that if cold storage are there, then we can store the fruit and uh, vegetables because these are the perishable commodities. And if we check the loss 
uh, of this perishable commodity, then we can very well feed up our uh, growing population. So he was ahead of his time. But today I am here to emphasize Dr. Chima as a breeder. As we know that uh, he has worked on various crops, right from grape, gava, pomegranate, mango, pea, citrus, even on trees, like plumaria and uh, flowers, jarvera. In uh, pomegranate, he has developed very benchmark variety that is uh, Ganesh, which has a big fruit size, high TSS, and soft seeded one. So far, no variety now in India is soft seeded in pomegranate. And still, it is being used in various crossing programs, breeding activities. Secondly, the Gava, the Sardar variety, uh, Dr. Mehra's mission, which is dwarf one and suitable for higher density planting with big fruit and creamy and white flesh. Beside this, being a great researcher, I want to highlight his contribution. During his tenure as at Ganesh King, where he started great breeding program. At that time, there were several introductions was a popular variety in bread. And from that Andri Sahib, Dr. Chima thought that he could get some uh, material. So what he did, he started the selection, a basic breeding tactics for crop improvement. He started what, with the whatever material he had at that time and even he tried to create some base population which could be used for selection. So from Pandri Sahib, uh, he developed open pollinated population. And from that open populated population, he identified two hybrids. That is selection 94 and selection 7. Actually, Chima uh, Pandri Sahib was a good variety, but it had some problem. Uh, due to its uh, partial sterility, bearing was a main issue with pantricide. So two hybrids we had developed, selection uh, 94 and selection 7. Selection 94 was revealed that had a profuse flowering and uh, per hectare yield was revenous. But again, there was some uh, lacunas in that variety that the flesh was soft, but the variety selection seven, which was later known as Chima Sahib, was a brilliant one. It was very much fit for the table purpose, having thin skin, a firm flesh, high TSS, and bloom over it, which are the required characteristics for the table crops. But somehow people uh, didn't recognize it for some time. But what happened, Mr. At that time, the uh, pioneer group, uh, grape grower, where the Dr. Uh, Rao Sahib Gaipad, then uh, Danukaka Date, Rao Sahib, uh, Dada Sahib, Shindekar, N.C. Borwake, and Mama Sahib Trek. These were the pioneer grape growers who started the tropical viticulture in India. Among them, Dada Sahib Shemeka realized the potential of this variety and he started growing it on his farm. And this variety you uh, uh, did wonder. Yeah. And from getting inspiration from the Shemeka's farm, other uh, farmers started its cultivation. And this is the turning point for the grape cultivation. Why I'm saying so? Because 
Shinbekar has started cultivating uh, Chima Saidi. We got uh, good yield, bumper yield. And from that, uh, Rao Sahib Pedlak from Sangam Nair pick up that variety, grow it on his farm. He uh, cultivate it. And besides getting a good crop, he also identified one method from the uh, Chima Sahib. Actually, Chima Sahib, we has only one defect. The berry shattering was a main issue. That's why this variety did not perform well during transportation and uh, during storage. So, Rao, Rao Sahib Pedla has identified Rao Sahib, a new mutant from the Chima Sahib, which was uh, having firm berry attachment. So, problem was uh, attached to Chima Sahib was solved by Rao Sahib Pedla. And thereafter, this trend was set in a grape industry. So many grape mutants were released by the farmers. So far, uh, more than 50 mutants are there in the India developed from the farmers, innovative farmers. And these mutants are the base of India viticulture. The clones developed from Thompson Sidless, Kishmish Cherney, and Anavesha. These are the ruling varieties now, which are released by the farmers. Beside this, now the grape industry of India has become a huge deal. Grape is grown on 1.56 uh, uh, lakh hectares with the yield of um, more than 35 million tons. And now India is a major table growing country, table grape producer uh, after China. And if we see the world scenario of grape cultivation, India is among the first 10 countries which export uh, its grape to uh, its grape global. Now, whatever we are observing today in the grape industry, if we dig deep, we will find the root in Chima So to recognize his contribution, when our institute, National Research Center for Graves, was established in 1997, our administrative building was named after his name as Dr. G. S. Chima. So with this, I will like to remember him as a great leader who touched almost every important food crops, even the tree and flowers. So I would like to pay homage on my personal behalf as well as on my institute behalf to Dr. Ichim. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nanjaya Thank you so much. And as you rightly said, we really, uh, we all pay homage to the great legend, I would say. So moving ahead, we have Dr. Barate, Director, National Research Center, Pomegranate. So from Pune, we move to Solapur now. Sir, are you here? Can you hear us? Dr. Marathi? Uh, sir, you'll have to unmute yourself and uh, then we'll be able to hear you out. Also, if you can please switch on your video. Okay, so by the time we connect with Dr. Marathe, uh, Dr. B.G. Bhujbal, sir, are you here? Can you hear me? Dr. Bhujbal? Yes. So, sir, yes. Yes. since you know we've heard a lot about Dr. Chima, and of course, you are, you know, you have been his student. So, I'm sure you could give us insights because you are the one who has uh, met him, who has known him, who has studied, who has learned a lot from him, and spreading around all the research and some amazing development. 
So, sir, if we can please hear a few words from you. So, in 1960, and there was the outbreak of the Spanish. So, Dr. Chima was staying at Sangamwadi. And when that was the third, the first occasion that we students went. very busy and uh, very not afraid of but worried he what about the, my plants and it is a collection karun thevlele hote after retirement mag amcha madatine mulancha madatine he called our professor or principal i i call it he send a team so we were in ncc at that time so all ncc course went there and he was a leader. So, he was a leader. 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 He was a He तो सुधा पुड़े पुड़े मागे पुड़े यूँ शेके तर ये कई चंतों दे तुमसे धना सा हाँ क्या सच है तो पहली कोशिश संगाई थी यंग बॉयज मैं कैसे भी तुम्हारे साइन हैव यू इटन हैव यू टेकन तीन है मैंने जो हैव यू इटन नाश्ता टेकन नाश्ता मैं चंचल गरीब जरा सुनो तो ते बसी बरों ते खाईला क्या मतलब सांगे नाश्ता करूँ आला है ना आता बहुत एक आम इच्छा भी इसके खून जाए जो पंतरी सुबह तो क्या नवाट है जगह ये निकाय पोट भर खा लेले नहीं क्या नंते परोड़न नहीं होता हमारा पंतरी सुबह तो यानी सांगे ठीक है ठीक है मगर तंचा मंडे होता मिसेस माँ माजी मनाई चे या ना बाजी मनाई चे गर्भवती it's not a good thing. It's not and he cut a totla, the good totla, as a thing, at least thus funny sunday. And he took our assent by Jay as he to Mala Wun Lagune. Wun the Laglet of Tinti Nirikan Shakti Kamute. To Mala Rag Locareto, to Mala Alas Locareto. Makumi don't know Tintin does come for the second night. Practical lap measures I say for three hours. To Mala Asamala Lilitan. Malagle Pani Pela Mikantala, as a Tanar Nahi, as a Sakai Sangaje, Ani Sakai Art was the Suru a little practical, Bara Sadevara Penisalaj. Ani Pratakshati Adi Kurunda Kaito. That Chatai as a Chatai, Pur Puralakta, Pur Manjakai, Pul Manjakai, Pulati Baka, Jaraji Baki, Titka Baraka in his bottom sack. Timely, horticulture, Pulsala, but basic the Czech Halidam the Sangaji, what is soil? What is water? Ata Amala Mutagamaja is a child after the Gamai Nigger upon Chetkarimula, after the Zemin Sangla Perche. But the Min Kashi is a summer, the tennis sang in them. Atta, yes, a guy would speak any part of any sang in them. Any song so done, Tartana, the Min varieties. As a player, the Mana Made Saga and the Min varieties, but you eat a Belmade. इस अगर नवीन वाली है कुछ जा संकरित है तो संकरित से मने जा अस्ता जा पाई जे हरकत नहीं पर ये संकरित वाला लड़की चंता पर तो ना होता ये मने इसे स्ट्रेट वन आने सिलेक्टेड सिलेक्शन सिलेक्शन सेवन सिलेक्शन नाइनटी फोर मने यह जेका ये सिलेक्शन नेचर मरे जेका ये नेचरली पॉलिनेशन होता है त्याचा तुन � अनेक विशेष करुण चेतकर्याना दर वेला 
बाजारात जाऊन नवीन शंकरीत बियाणं आणावं लागत नाही आजची परिस्थिती बघा तुम्ही पाऊस झाला का सगळे शेतकरी लोक त्या दुकानाकडे जातात कशासाठी बियाण्यासाठी आणि हायब्रिड बियाणं शेतकरी स्वतः करू शकत नाही शेतीचा मूळ प्रश्न जो आहे बियाण्याचा जमिनीनंतर जमीन पाणी बी त्या तिन्हीचा त्यांनी अभ्यास केला होता आणि म्हणून ते सांगायचे की स्ट्रेट व्हरायटी मग त्या स्ट्रेट व्हरायटी निर्माण कशा करायच्या आपोआप काही निसर्ग देणार नाही पण निसर्गामध्ये जे काही घडत आहे ते कसं घडत ते त्या सगळ्याचा अभ्यास कसा करायचा आणि त्याच्यातून कमीत कमी काळामध्ये व्हरायटी शेतकऱ्यांच्या दारापर्यंत कशी जाईल आणि शेतकऱ्यांच्या तिथे पहिले प्रयोग कसे होतील आणि मग ते शेतकऱ्यांना कधी जातील असं ते सांगायचे फार मोठा ह्याचा भाग आहे ज्या वेळेला एकूण सत्तर साली नामकरण झालं त्या वयातील म्हणजे आता द्राक्ष नाही तिथे परंतु तिथं ते काम माझ्याकडे होत की तुम्ही नमुना म्हणून ते झाड फळ आणा तर मी जवळजवळ दोन चार पाट्या त्या वेळेला काही रेट वगैरे नव्हते पाट्या आणले डाळिंब आणि त्यांनी सांगितलं आता एक एक फळ घ्यायचे ते आम्ही नो 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 दिस इज नॉट माय गणेश ठेवलं बाजू आणि ह्या सगळ्या दोन चार पाट्यामधून मग त्यांनी एक डझन भर फळ येस 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 मग कोणी आणले हे हे मग भुजबळाने आणले म्हणून आधी मी त्यांच्याजवळ गेलो मग त्यांनी पुस्तक सांगितलं की हे राहिलेलं काम जे आहे त्यातलं हे त्यांनी आम्हाला दोघा किंवा विद्यार्थ्यांना सांगितलं त्याच्यामध्ये डॉक्टर केसकर एक होते डॉक्टर बावळ होते आणि हे तुम्ही काम डॉक्टर बोरे पण होते आणि वाटून दिलं त्यांनी की तुम्ही कमलाईचं तुम्ही काम करा तुमचं राहिलं मग देशले होते ते फ्लोरिकल्चरचं तुम्ही काम करा ते चाफा काढला आणखी काही माल किंवा तयार झाले समजा तुम्ही शंभर किलो माल घेतला विज्ञायोग्य किती आहे विज्ञायोग्य किती आहे वेस्टेज किती आहे तर वेस्टेज शुड बी मिनिमम इट शुड बी टेन पर्सेंट म्हणजे भाजीपाल्यामध्ये असो किंवा कुठल्या याच्यामध्ये असो द वेस्टेज शुड नॉट बी मोर दॅन टेन पर्सेंट हे त्यांचं आग्रहाने म्हणणं असायचं आणि त्या दृष्टीने मग ते शिरलेच कारण त्याच्यामध्ये वेस्टेज कमी होत म्हणजे अशा तऱ्हेचा विचार करून तुम्ही हे सिलेक्शन करायला पाहिजे की वेस्टेज कमी झालं त्याच्यामध्ये पाहिजे तर त्या दृष्टिकोनातून त्यांनी दुसरं महायुद्ध सुरू झालं त्यावेळेस ते रिटायर रिटायर झालं एकोणचाळीस साली महायुद्ध सुरू झालं त्यावेळेला ते सर्व्हिसमध्ये होते आणि ज्या वेळेला युद्ध संपलं त्यावेळेच्या आधी ते रिटायर झाले होते परंतु त्यांचं काम बघून सेंट्रल गव्हर्नमेंटने त्यांना तीन वर्ष दिले की तुम्ही हे तुमचं काम पुढे करा काय काम करा तर कोल्ड स्टोरेजचं किंवा स्टोरेज आणि तुमचं हे प्रोसेसिंग तर पुण्याचं जे अग्रिकल्चर कॉलेज आहे तिथे मोठा पोटॅटो शेड बांधलेला आहे का त्यांना माहिती आहे कारण मग तिथे पोटॅटो हे व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट म्हणजे की त्याच्यामध्ये स्टेपल फूड म्हणून जे आहे आणि वर्षातून आपण दोन पिकं घेतो त्यांचं म्हणणं असं आहे की तुम्ही तीन पिकं सुद्धा घेऊ शकता असं समजलं म्हणजे जमीन लिमिटेड आहे पाणी लिमिटेड आहे मॅन पॉवर इज लिमिटेड म्हणून तुम्ही एकापेक्षा जास्त पिकं ती कशी घेता येतील म्हणजे तुमचं रिले क्रॉपिंग मिक्स क्रॉपिंग हे आता व्हर्टिकलचे गार्डनिंग वगैरे वगैरे जे आलेलं आहे ह्या सगळ्या आयडिया किमानच्या डोक्यात होत्या आणि ती तसे त्यावेळेला इतक्या त्यांनी त्यांच्या परीने तर गणेश किल्ला जे तिथं त्यांच्या डोळ्यापुढे ह्याच गोष्टी होत्या की तयार झालेला माल हा प्रोसेसिंग कसा होईल पॅकिंग कसा होईल आणि त्याची शेवटपर्यंत काळजी एकदा तुम्ही हाती घेतलेलं काम शेवटपर्यंत नेलं पाहिजे आज हापूस आंब्यामध्ये जो साखा तयार होतो तेव्हा त्यांच्या डोक्यात होत की कोकणचा विकास करायचा असेल तर हा हापूस आंबाच करू शकेल आणि त्याच्यामध्ये मग काय ड्रॉबॅक आहे तर हा साखा की ज्याला आपण स्पॉन्जी टिश्यू म्हणतो मग हा स्पॉन्जी टिश्यू कसा घालवायचा तर प्रुनिंग टेक्निक्स व्हरायटी काय एका दिवसात तयार होणार परंतु तुम्ही याच्या वॉर्निंग दिली संपलं 
तर अशा रीतीने डॉक्टर चीमा हे आपल्या सगळ्यांच्या दृष्टीने एक आदर्शवत सायंटिस्ट आम्ही त्यांना ग्रेट सायंटिस्ट म्हणतो जी एस चीमा भुजबर सर जी भुजबर सर हम हम जानते हैं आपके पास बहुत कुछ बहुत ज्ञान है और बहुत कुछ है सबको बताने के लिए तो वो जानते हैं पर थोड़ा समय का अभाव है तो उसके लिए हमें थोड़ा जल्दी करना पड़ेगा थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच मतलब बहुत अच्छा लगा आपसे सुन के आपसे जान के थैंक यू और सर आपका स्माइल आपका स्माइल बहुत बहुत अच्छा है हम हम सबका दिन बन गया आपकी स्माइल देखकर जी सो डॉक्टर मराठे आप ज्वाइन कर पाए हैं आई थिंक उन तक पहुंचने में कुछ कठिनाई हो रही है हम फिर से एक बार ट्राई करते हैं सो मीन वाइल डॉक्टर अंजलि करोलिया जी इज हियर विद अस She is granddaughter of Dr. Chima. Namaskar, madam. Can you hear me? You have to unmute yourself, ma'am. Yeah, Shruti. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, yes. from the uh, what, the, how teacher he was, what kind of a person he was, what a great uh, horticulturalist he was. So now over to you on what kind of person also he was. So a vote of thanks from you and. Uh, would like to know more from you please uh, so good morning to all namaste uh, dr sunil marshalkar associate dean college of agriculture pune i'll definitely come and meet you one day dr jagdish rane director central institute of arid agriculture bikaner uh, dr marathe we couldn't hear him but uh, i'm sure he's there dr sk roy uh director icr ravi puna uh krishi bhushan um mr anil meher uh krishi vigyan kendra narayan ka puna and all the students who are there with them uh dr dhananjay govande who is uh, also from the grape national research center for grapes manjri puna and uh, dr prakash kulkarni uh on behalf of the entire chima family uh i wish to thank each one of you uh for your uh, for remembering my grandfather dr g s chima uh on his 129th birth anniversary and all your words about his work done about uh, which is almost 7 to 8 decades ago are still being mentioned and remembered by the agricultural research fraternity is really overwhelming for us and for all of us in the family uh you know uh, it's been um, uh, actually now uh, i have retired and i am now in his house which is still there with the family uh, where my father was staying earlier and now uh, now that my father is no more uh, i am there now to uh, and my sister to look after the a property in uh, pune so all of you are most welcome to uh, his house one day if you would ever want to come down and visit it uh, i also have to be uh, you know very thankful to uh, dr prakash kulkarni who actually is the person who's instrumental in uh, having this day celebrated every year uh right from his 100th birth anniversary which was in 1994 uh my father used to usually be there and for the last 3 years i have been uh, coming uh you know for this uh, uh celebration and i really would want to be really grateful to dr kulkarni for his effort that he puts in every year and you know making it such a wonderful uh, feeling for uh, all of us and the tribute that is paid to him and remembered even today after all these uh, years of you know when these days we tend to forget everything very fast but uh, still having him being remembered is really thanks to all of you uh, so uh, once again from my whole family we still have two of his children uh who are still here the rest have joined him up there but uh, my aunt my uh, 
father, uh, my, uh, his daughter, the youngest sibling, the youngest daughter, uh, Dr. Baljeet Chauhan. She is still, uh, uh, you know, and sends her wishes also on this day. And thank you to all of you. And uh, Mr. Harvan Chima, another, uh, one son of his, he's also uh, still here. We are a whole lot of uh, grandchildren, 14 of us. We have a number of, he has a number of great grandchildren, over 20, and also great, great grandchildren, which are again around 15. So uh, from each one of us, we remember him every day. He's very fondly remembered and we call him Baji and uh, my grandmother was Beji. So uh, we uh, really would want to thank each one of you. He was an amazing person. I remember him very well. Uh, all, all our cousins remember him very well because he was very, very um, a humble person, a lot to learn from, didn't speak too much, but whatever he said went down our minds and our hearts. And uh, we still, uh, you know, uh, in all our talks, even today, we always have something to say about him. And as young children, uh, we were inspired for, you know, we would always say who's going to be the first Dr. Chima after him, because he had got his uh, doctorate way back in 1920 from UK, University of Bristol. And from there, he had got, uh, gone to the US to uh, do his uh, further studies in orchards and orchard farming, uh, which was in California. And uh, so... Uh, and from there, this was 1920, when he was coming back, it was the World War time. And uh, I believe he was in uh, house arrest in Turkey because, uh, you know, he had the British uh, Empire passport. And uh, I don't know, I would love to have, uh, but we had heard this when we were young, that uh, from there he had picked up the saplings of the fig, Anjir. And uh, that is when it came to India in the 1920s and he had it planted all around in, uh, you know, this Pune and Maharashtra region. So if somebody could, uh, you know, uh, look into this and see the authenticity of what we had heard, it would really be nice to know whether it was him who got the figs or the anjir into this part of uh, the country, because that is what we had heard as uh, kids, whenever the season would come uh, in Pune and the Anjir and would be in the market, you know, this is what would be said at home. So uh, this is something that I think we could uh, look into. But once again, thank you so much, each one of you. And I would also want to uh, give my uh, uh, thanks to uh, Kishin, uh, the Kisan Shiksha Abhyan uh, Pune for uh, airing this online and having it. Uh, and to all the wonderful students who are here, uh, I've also been a professor and in the university and uh, of course retired now, but lovely to see the young faces over here. And uh, I hope all of you a very bright future, I wish you all a, and you take this forward and even come up with better uh, researches and uh, you know, uh, more uh, important work in uh, horticulture, where the seedling has already been sown, but all of you are the ones who are going to take it all forward. So thank you and namaskar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ram. Thank you. As you rightly said, that uh, the students will take it forward. So, but still, I'd like to just mention that one thread who has brought all of us together here. Exactly. Is, from Dr. Chima is um, you know, on remembering him is Udyanshri Prakash Kulkarni ji himself. I think as you rightly mentioned that uh, he's dedicatedly working towards uh, such wonderful causes and remembering uh, Dr. Chima on his birthday, birth anniversary every time. So Kulkarni ji, namaskar and thank you so much for uh, presenting and bringing all of us together and such for such wonderful sessions. So we'd like to hear you out for a couple of minutes and uh, then we'll close. Sir, over to you. I respect you all. I'm very much grateful to you all to participate in today's noble cause of remembering our great guru in horticulture. 
the objective of this zoom online meeting is to is get inspiration for today's researchers and the future generation of horticulturists to contribute in the farming community to get better income my sincere thanks to all of you who have wholeheartedly joined this event and made it successful thank you very much thank you to all the speakers all the students i hope this session is inspiring to all of you the session was presented by krishi board in association with kisan thank you <laughs>